speak more to about things that Amazon can't do. What do you think are the reading habits that someone involved in a bookstore needs to have? I'm way more likely to like take a book on the shelf with someone that I recognize their face from coming in here than somebody that just walks in off the street. The thing about books is, you know, like the margins are, are kind of thin. So like, you know, a lot of the money that, you know, we make goes right back into the store. What kind of suggests to you that, oh, if we had more, we'd still be okay? When we were in Seattle, there, we learned that there are 69 bookstores and over 300 literary organizations. Columbus has a larger population than Seattle, and we have. We are here at Prologue, the bookstore, with Gary Lovely. Yeah. Perfect. And we're going to be talking about what is it like to run a bookshop or to have a bookshop or to be thinking about a bookshop in 2024. Thank you for being with us, Gary. Of course. Happy to do it. Gary, how long have you been involved with Prologue? Uh, I've been in Prologue for three years. Uh, Prologue has been open for five years. Gotcha. Just a little over. And what, when you think of like, just like the book industry in general, what kind of drew you in? Uh, so uh, this is my 15th year. Uh, so I started working uh, at a poetry publishing company whenever uh, in 2009 called Rot Bloody. Uh, I was an editor there. I was... I did all kinds of stuff, social media, some things like that, um, and then got a, my first book job, uh, bookstore job when I was in college, yeah, in Kentucky. Would you say that during those 15 years that there have been any like significant changes or trends that you've noticed happening? Yeah, um, you know, Amazon has obviously taken a you know a pretty large you know effect on our business. Uh, I think more scary early on than now uh but uh but yeah that's going to be you know one thing i think you know shifting trends is always something that we always have to keep up with but uh. when you say it was more scary in the past than it is now do you elaborate on that i th i think as as young booksellers often do i think you look at the giant corporation as something that can shut you down and obviously it, it can um but i think that once you're around longer and then you care about the thing that we do which is selling books and like offering community for places you realize that there are things that amazon can't do that we can and i think a good bookstore is something you know that could outlast any of that very easily and it has you speak more to about things that amazon can't do that bookshops like this having a physical presence brick and mortar yeah what are some things that we can do like yeah, so we can, you know, a, a lot of, uh, you know, we, we offer a lot of different, you know, community based things here. We run, you know, drives for the Appalachian Prison Book Project. We can talk to you face to face. We offer events. We're also able to, uh, you know, like small authors that, you know, might not have like a big footprint on Amazon. I can hand sell them to a person in here, you know, a hundred times over, you know, and I think it just creates kind of like a better reading environment where you're not just like reading based on algorithms or based on what everybody else is reading. We offer a lot of curation here. So I think that that really helps. Would you say, like, what would you say is your relationship with your readers like? Like, how are you getting people here? Yeah, uh, we do a lot of, you know, social media newsletter work, just like anything else. Uh, I'm super active on the internet and have been for a long time but uh you know we you know we try to offer like i said you know at least a couple two three events a month to try to get folks in the door um we often sell books outside of the bookshop at, at you know down at the you know different centers around town literary centers and obviously down at the convention center as well how easy is it would you say for like an author who has a book like let's say i self-publish something is that mm -hmm. something that you guys also can help out with or you're looking for more traditional publishing? Yeah, so we we, mo we mostly focus on traditional publishing here. You know, we're kind of a small shop, but we do take uh, we do have a consignment program for self-published authors as well, and all that information is on our website. Mm -hmm. If I know you mentioned the site information is on the website, mm -hmm. what's kind of like the general? If someone is self-published and they're like, "Man, I want to reach out to bookstores in general," what are some tips that you would give? Yeah, always email and don't call. I would I would say like, you know, like, you know, we just got a lot going on and it's like way better if you just put like a really good email together with all the information. How do we get the book? How much does it cost? You know, what the book is about just so we can make sure that, you know, that it aligns with our values um, and just, you know, be nice to your booksellers. You should also shop in the stores that you, you know, want to bring your book in. Like, you know, say I, I'm way more likely to like, take a book on the shelf with someone that I recognize their face from coming in here than somebody that just walks in off the street that's never been in here before. Mm -hmm. You also mentioned that you're, you're doing events and things like that. Where are some events that we've had in this space? 
Yeah, so uh, last, uh, I'm going to say this was two nights ago, we hosted uh, Curtis Chin for, he had a recent uh, memoir called Everything I Know I Learned in a Chinese Restaurant. Um, his family had owned this very famous Chinese restaurant in Detroit, uh, so he's been doing like a national tour for that. Um, upcoming, we have uh, Keith O'Brien, uh, who has been a New York Times bestseller a couple times over now, uh, who wrote a book about Pete Rose that's going to be in here on April 1st. Yeah. If someone's thinking about opening up their own bookstore, mm -hmm. what are some things that you would think would be good for them to consider? Yeah, uh, so there's tons of like there's there's tons of resources for that. Um, the American Booksellers Association has guides for basically everything you can do. And there's also two really great bookstore schools, one based in Florida that is in person. And then there's uh, the Professional Bookselling School, uh, which I used to teach at, actually, uh, for like brand new booksellers or new bookstore owners. And it kind of they offer tracks for like, you know, finance and how to buy books and, you know, how to run events and all kinds of other stuff. It's really good. Yeah, I would say talk to other booksellers as well. It's it's a lot harder business than I think a lot a lot of people seem to think it is. Um, the margins are very tight. It's very confusing on how to like run a place like this, even though it seems like pretty straightforward. But, but yeah, there's lots of great information. Can you speak. I don't know how comfortable you are talking like numbers and things. Can mm -hmm. you talk a little bit about like the margins and things like that? Like where are the costs going? Where's the income coming? from? Yeah, so that's the the thing about books is, you know, like the margins are are kind of thin. So like, you know, a lot of the money that, you know, we make goes right back into the store and into payroll. We we try to make sure especially at Prologue that, you know, we offer like, you know, really good, you know, wages and stuff to our employees. Um, you know, any time that like uh, you know, a lot of like larger publishers can offer like good discounts and stuff like that. So we really try to, try to take advantage of that. You know, like I said, we have a small space here, so we have to really make every single square foot count. Mm -hmm. What are, if you had to like kind of define like what you would consider to be like the biggest hurdle mm -hmm. to opening a shop or to running a shop or just being involved with a shop, what would you say mm -hmm. that hurdle could be? Yeah, um, I would probably say foot traffic. Honestly, just just discoverability, making sure that folks know that you exist. You know, obviously we have a really good, you know, situation here because we're on High Street. You know, there's lots of foot traffic down here. But, you know, for folks that are opening a store, you know, that maybe isn't in like a bustling kind of like spot like this, it can be a little harder. Um, you know, even we've had our challenges making sure that folks get to show up to events, like things like that. So, like, you know, it's, it can be tough. How important is online sales? Uh, yeah, pretty important. Uh, you know, we obviously saw this like, you know, uh, during, you know, once COVID happened, you know, like our all, I think across the board, across the entire country, all of our online sales skyrocketed. And then it's kind of leveled back off now, but we still see a lot more than we used to. Um, and it's great, you know, especially pre-order campaigns, all this stuff is very helpful. Like say, you know, someone you know has written a book and you want to order that book before it comes out. It's incredibly helpful to your local store because that kind of informs us on what to buy, how many to buy of each book. Yeah. In terms of foot traffic, are there things that you found to be more successful than others at driving foot traffic into the store? Yeah. Um, you know, it's, it's always a process, uh, but, uh, you know, we started doing these sidewalk sales uh, during the gallery hub down here in the short north. And those have been like great for both like just folks kind of like we'll have some books, you know, on on some tables outside if you haven't been. Um, so folks will see it whenever they're walking on the sidewalk instead of just walk walking on past. Great for, you know, newcomers, you know, especially, you know, also with the events, the events kind of do the same thing. It's like you'll get folks into the store that have never been in here before and then we'll see them come back, which is nice. When you're doing like a sidewalk set, how do you decide like what books are going to be outside versus inside? Is, is it mostly like cover base? Is yeah. The name of the book? No, the no. Yeah, so we do a lot of discount stuff outside. So we're able to bring in what's called remainder books. Uh, so outside. And if you're unfamiliar with that term, all that is is like kind of like uh, unsold overstock that publishers will have through the years that we're able to buy at a deep discount. And then we're able to offer that discount to the customer, which is nice too. What are some things that you would like to see? prologue doing in the future yeah uh more community based events like you know like we've we've really like tried to like you know like you know we just did like this uh huge clothing drive for uh cougar closet uh so for like uh trans and non-binary folks you know 
clothes that can you know help them like affirm their gender identities and stuff like that. Uh, like I said, we worked with Appalachian Prison Book Project, so I would love to do more like that. You know, more to just like things that aren't necessarily selling books but are still very helpful to the community. I think that's super important for a bookstore, and just to just to be a community space. You know, I mean, it's not all about you know. Of course, like we have to sell books to survive, but it's I don't think it's all about that. I think you should use a space like this to like help the folks around you. How would you say? You've already talked about this, like. You were a social media manager mm -hmm. or like doing heavy social media stuff with different companies, yeah. like literary based things. Are there any like social media trends that you see happening that you try to take advantage of or posts, types of posts that you find to be more successful? I just think that it's like if you're engaging with your audience in a normal way, I think that is the best way to do things. Like don't try to sell stuff like too much on Twitter or you know what I mean? Or like, you know, really on Instagram. I think if like, you know, if you're operating a space like this a business like this like you know that can get super old to everybody really quick nobody wants to see it i i just think it's like better to just like act like a normal human being online <laughs> whatever that means to you <laughs> how much time do you dedicate to this stuff? we have someone uh our we have a bookseller caroline who works on it every single day just making sure that we can you know po we're constantly like you know posting like new books that we have like kind of like what we're doing in the shop and stuff i think it, it's good to like connect with folks like that platform just just instagram yeah okay. well, yeah yeah like I, we don't really use twitter for the shop anymore but yeah what led to that decision uh not nothing not anything specifically i think it's like it's in like a you know spiraling downfall <laughs> and has been for a while <laughs> but you know it's just not something we really need for the shop i don't think mm -hmm. how did you settle on instagram uh, you know, we just, we have like, uh, it, I think it's a good way to like, you know, we showcase all the new releases on Tuesdays and then, you know, it's a good, just like visual platform to like, kind of like show folks the shop and kind of look what we have. So you have like, you have like a schedule that you follow, like Tuesday we do this. Sunday yeah. Do this. So new books, all new books come out on Tuesday. Uh, so that's like a great day for us to like, you know, pick the stuff that like, you know, we're really excited about that's coming out and kind of show it off to everybody. Um, which is important to us here, just like I said, you know, because we're small, we focus on a ton of small press works. Uh, we focus on works in translation, things that you're maybe not going to see at a, on other bookstores in town. So it's good to like be able to show those off like, okay, like this might not be on the top 10 bestsellers, you know what I mean? But this is like, this is what we're excited about. Yeah. Which I imagine involves a lot of work on the back end because you have to familiarize yourself. With yeah. The books. Yeah. Speak to kind of like what do you think are the reading habits that someone involved in a bookstore needs to have? Yeah, so um, publishers all year long will send us books months and months and months before they come out. So we really try to like, you know, obviously like I'll read a lot of backlist older stuff too, but I really try to keep up on, you know, what's happening in independent publishing and just like, like I said, works in translation across the country. So we'll try to read those like, we're all constantly reading all the time. Everyone on the staff is a huge, like, t huge reader. So, like, it, it kind of helps with, like, you know, every week that something comes out, at least one of us have touched on, you know, a couple of the books, and we kind of know, like, what's happening. How much time do you read every day? Uh, if, not as much as I would like. Uh, <laughs> but uh, but at least a little bit every every day, I think, is, is good. Is that something even when you're hiring people, you're like kind of like scouting? To see, like, yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. We we definitely like, especially anytime that I've hired anyone here, it's like uh, it's not really part of the interview process, but a a really like a real dedication to books and even book selling is like a is a real thing that we look for. So yeah, it's kind of hard to do this job if you don't read. <laughs> what are your thoughts on how AI and AI written works and text and things like that are going to impact industry moving forward? Um, I think it's hard to know right now. I think we all hate it. Um, you know, I mean, I, I think if, if you were, if you work in art at all, you should not be excited about AI. Uh, but I think that like, you know, like the thing about the book industry is like, I think a lot of us are smart enough to recognize when it is or when it isn't AI. And you know we'll never carry anything like if if the, if we know a book is written by uh, it'll never enter the store, um, and I think that's that's the most important like, kind of thing is just kind of being on top of you know what's coming out and knowing who wrote it. <laughs> yeah. And I think publishers are 
are also, you know, trying to, as best as they can to crack down on that kind of stuff too, especially like, you know, folks will like have been like using Amazon's publisher services to use, um, you know, to have AI written books. And I think even that has kind of been like cracked down on a little bit recently. So we'll see. Yeah. You mentioned you used to work for Right Bloody. Mm -hmm. Down in Texas? Yeah. Did you, were you down there? No, no, I was in Eastern Kentucky. Uh, so Derek Brown, who, who runs Right Bloody, that was, it was, it's such a, that's a great publisher. They put out tons of great work. Um, I was just kind of following them online, like following their poets, like back in, you know, the late 2000s when like uh, tons of the, uh, spoken word stuff was happening and wanted to be involved and they you know for whatever reason let me be involved and yeah mm -hmm. kind of went from there what would you say are some of the differences between working for a publisher versus working in a bookstore yeah um i think the big thing is that you know you've got a much smaller list of books to champion all the time so it's like you know it's like it's really great you got to be super passionate about like you know your authors and and the things that you know you are doing specifically I would rather work in a bookshop, you know, just because we kind of have like unlimited, you know, things to be excited about here. Uh, publishing is also, you know, it's a lot of like work, like, you know, on a computer and like, you know, like doing kind of stuff like that, where this like lets me really engage with the community, which I think is, you know, it's super important to me. So, yeah. Any like final thoughts that you think would be important for people to know if they're thinking about, oh, I want to start my own bookshop or, oh, I want to even just become an employee at one yeah i would just say do your research um i think most booksellers are at least that i know are very very nice and would be very helpful to you to answer questions um i would check out those bookseller schools uh and please open more bookstores like you know we're we're a city with you know around 10 bookstores and we could hold double triple that i think so that yeah like the more the merrier please come come do it when you say that, like, you feel like there, there could be even more, what kind of suggests to you that, oh, if we had more, we'd still be okay. Like, they would have... Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, so we went to, so there's, uh, there's a big conference for book selling. It's the biggest book selling conference called Winter Institute. Each year, it's, it's in a different city in the country. Last year, it was in Seattle. When we were in Seattle, there, we learned that there are 69 bookstores and over 300 literary organizations. Columbus has a larger population than Seattle and we have 10 bookstores and, you know, like a handful, like, you know, 10 or so literary organizations. It could happen. I think we just like Columbus needs to like be more serious about investing in art uh, in ways that, you know, can, you know, help the community, you know, but. How would you describe your relationship with the other bookstores? Great. Yeah, we're all friends, uh, and honestly, we we just announced like two days ago or yesterday that uh, we're actually about to have a uh, a bookstore crawl uh, for all of us. Yeah, so that's going to be on Independent Bookstore Day on April twenty seventh. Cool. Yeah. Nice. Well, Gary, thank you so much for of course. taking your time out of your morning. Yeah. Thanks for this space to tell thanks to the owners and things like that. We greatly appreciate it. Yeah. Um, we'll see you around the community. Okay. Later. Yeah. Thank you.